Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Aquarius Rising. The one and the only Aquarius Rising. I'm kind of nervous about this video, but let's get right into it. So first I'm going to give you some characteristics of the Aquarius Rising and talk to you a little bit about what the Ascendant is and how this pertains to Aquarius. Then I'm going to talk about the Descendant. So everything that has to do with your Descendant, your seventh house, your relationship needs, and what these are for Aquarius. And last, I'm going to go over two celebrities. I just couldn't pick one. I couldn't. I love Aquarius rising people. And I chose two. I narrowed it on to do. We're going to do two celebrity charts. So let's get right into so, it. Aquarius is the sign that is ruled by Saturn, the planet of social structure. And it's also ruled by Uranus the planet of sudden destruction and sudden awakenings, okay? So put those things together and that's essentially what Aquarius is. They really are visionary kind of people who really want to see a society the way that they envision it in their mind. Everything that they imagine, they want to see it created in the real world. That's the most important thing you should know about Aquarius because Saturn is structure and Saturn wants to see something on paper and in built. They want to see it in the world. So all the interactions that you had when you were a little kid are the things that put your ascendant together. And I like to think of the ascendant as kind of a coat of armor that you wear or a kind of spacesuit that you wear that's going to allow you to survive in this new environment. And the new environment for you is essentially the world or your life. So your mom, your dad, your siblings, anyone who was really around you when you were a little kid, they were the ones forming you and shaping you so that you could have a social personality that would allow you to put your best foot forward based on the things that were around you. So the specific needs that you had were really sewn into your ascendant. So really what you leave behind in the 12th house Aquarius rising are those Capricorn traits. So wanting to achieve things for personal success that gets left and thrown out the door. Wanting to accomplish things to be like, oh, I'm number one. All of those things get thrown in the back because the message that you heard when you were a little kid and when you were forming this social personality was, hey, you're not that special. You're just as special as everybody else in society and you need to get in line and help everyone improve the world. That is really what you got as a message. And I know that a lot of you Aquarius Rising's cringed at the thought of not being special. I know that you guys are special. You're very special. I love Aquarius Rising people. The message is really don't do anything for self-interest. Don't make yourself more special than everybody else. Everybody has a place and you need to know your place in society and you need to work to improve society as a whole. Really thinking about the whole and not really the individual person. Hey guys, so this is editing Denise of the Future. And I really forgot to mention the fact that with Aquarius rising, another thing that you're leaving behind in the 12th house is I mentioned, you know, achievement for the sake of self-interest, but Capricorn isn't just self-interest. Capricorn is really concerned with achieving for the sake of getting safety for themselves and their family, the ones that they care about. And that is the whole purpose of then achieving success is really for safety. So Aquarius leaves that behind because with Aquarius rising, you're really more concerned with the safety of humanity as a whole, the safety of the group and mankind and your country altogether, just people. So you're really not concerned with your self safety. You're more concerned with the safety of the group. Let's go back to the video. You came into this world to join social groups, to really question the structure of society and really question what was beneficial in society and what was not beneficial. You came with a little bit of a contrarian sort of mind, very intellectual Aquarius. And you do this because you're looking for holes in people's arguments and you're looking for holes in the structures of society. And you want to take those holes, exploit them and crumble the whole thing and build it all up again to make it better than it was before. The way that Capricorn thinks of worldly success all that gets left in your 12th house. So Aquarius really isn't thinking about success for himself or herself. He's really thinking about the success of the human race as a whole. They are very altruistic people. And because of this, they are always trying to see how they can improve the world. They're just their community, their environment, the world around them. They're always questioning 
how can I make the world a better place? Aquarius is very cool and detached, kind of similar to Capricorn because they have that Saturn that makes them just like cool and just be like, oh, I don't care. But they also have that quirkiness of Uranus and Uranus really provides, Uranus is a very electric and electrifying planet and Uranus provides strokes of insight and of genius. So they have this very, they look like they're smart. Aquarius people just, Christ rising people, they just look like they're smart and they very often are because the first house is also the way that you concern your mind because it is the way that you see the world. So the way that you see your world is your mentality, right? And the way that Aquarius sees the world is from a very altruistic vantage point. They're not like down there in the mud with like Taurus who's thinking about you know, their material safety, not that that's a bad thing, but they're more so looking at it from a very high vantage point of looking at society as a whole and at large. So when you're alone in your room and you're eating potato chips and binge watching TV shows, that is your moon. That is when you're comfortable. And the ascendant is all the behaviors that you put on as soon as somebody walks in. So what behaviors would Aquarius rising put on? Aquarius rising would, first of all, you know, just they probably would continue watching their show and eating potato chips because they're just like, oh, I don't care, man. Because they always want to be cool. They don't want to be sloppy, but they do want to be cool. And so they want to be detached, but at the same time, they want to befriend you. So it's very interesting because they, they seem very friendly, but they aren't necessarily very engaging. They're not going to engage you right off the bat. They're more often you know, just on the outskirts. I feel like they get other people to come to them. That is more of an Aquarius thing. So you might seem aloof at first, like, you know, like, oh, I don't really care, oh, like that. But there's an underlying friendliness to Aquarius rising that is still there nonetheless. So the Ascendant is also kind of like a filter through which you see the world and through which the world sees you. So you see the world from the first house. And your filter Aquarius is really, I like to think of the Aquarius filter as kind of like a Technicolor sort of thing. It reminds me of like Miami in the 80s. I'll pop up some pictures of how I envision it. I feel that they see the world with all the possibilities that it could be. And whenever they see out into the world and they don't see that reality that they envision in their mind, it upsets them because they're just like, Things are like this, oh, but they could be so much better. They're very utopian in their way of thinking and they don't like to keep their mind occupied with just like the things that they would consider like low level, just like gossip or anything that is like, just like the low level stuff. He's just like, man, I'm over here trying to take over the world and like change humanity. Like, I don't care about that stuff. I feel sometimes that it's difficult for Aquarius rising people to be like human beings, like just have normal human interactions because their minds are like somewhere else. The lens through which they see the world is very futuristic and it's really full of potential and the potential that the world has, that society has. But at the same time, you know, you have that filter that it's filtering all your planets. Everybody that sees you, sees you through that filter. So when people see you, you look not of this earth sometimes, Aquarius rising. You look cool and interesting and unique. And it might make people put off if they're uncomfortable with your uniqueness or your specialness. But at the same time, it's attractive. So people are just going to be like, hmm, that guy is interesting. That girl's interesting. She's a little bit different. She's a little bit quirky, but in a cool way. Even though Aquarius might seem like they're a social outcast and like they're different from everybody, they are always socially aware. They always know the latest trends before they even happen. And it almost seems like they're setting those trends. They probably will tell you like, oh, I set this trend. And I don't know if they actually do or if they just find out about trends way before everybody else. It's like they're plugged into social consciousness. And that is how they get trends before they even happen or how they make trends happen. Not only that, but in order to stay on top of things and really be at the cutting edge of information, Aquarius really needs to stay connected. They spend a lot of time online figuring out what is going on. The topics that they're interested in are really kind of like out there and not necessarily occult, even though sometimes it can be occult. They're just interested in topics that are on the fringe of what a regular person might be interested in. So they might be interested in like ghosts or aliens or astrology or just metaphysical topics that aren't just 
common knowledge to everybody else. That's what Aquarius Rising really spends a lot of time on. They're really into science too, because, because of that, they feel that science is going to move mankind forward. So that is why they are scientifically inclined. And without Aquarius Rising, really that is what gives a person just some layer of just magic. And I call it magic. Pisces and Aquarius are just magical to me, but it really is something very special about Aquarius Rising people. And I know they think they're special, but they really are. If you really pay attention to them, they really are not on the same wavelength that everybody else is on. They can be really funny because they are creative, because Uranus provides a lot of creative insight and they have a very interesting way of looking at the world. So I think that makes them pretty funny. They also come across as very unemotional because they like to intellectualize things and they like to be seen as intellectuals. So they don't really value emotion very much. You might not see them display a lot of emotions. They also want to be seen as unbiased. They really want to come to you from a place of like a higher moral ground. And last thing I'll say about Aquarius rising people is that they're always excellently dressed because I feel that it's like the Saturn with Uranus thing because Saturn provides a lot of structure and they're very put together, but Uranus provides them that very, something unique about their way of dress. And you'll never know if that quirkiness, if they're doing it on purpose or if it's ironic or do they really mean to wear their their father's shirt? Are they really wearing their grandma's mumu as a dress? Like, you're never sure if it's ironic or they just threw it on. And it always looks like they're not trying too hard. They always want to look like they're not trying too hard. Are they trying? I don't know. Let me know, Aquarius Rising. Are you trying hard? I don't really know. All I know is that you guys are great dressers. So now let's talk about the descendant and your relationship needs. So the descendant, your seventh house, really contains all of the behaviors that all the things that you wouldn't do yourself that you kind of repress and project onto other people, those go into your seventh house. And for Aquarius, really they project and they denounce any feelings of specialness, any feelings of being like wanting to be the center of attention or wanting to feel special and being like, oh, I'm number one, I'm better than you. I'm all of the negative qualities of Leo and the good qualities of Leo really get thrown into that seventh house. So when you come into a relationship with somebody, those are the characteristics that you're able to display. So you're able to be a little bit dramatic. You, you can take off that mask of being very intellectual and cool and just never emotional. You get to be emotional. You get to be dramatic. You get to be passionate because, you know, it, it's probably tiring to always be the smart guy who doesn't have any feelings. You're not a computer, Aquarius Rising. So in your relationships, you get to be a little dramatic. You get to let out your inner Leo and feel special and feel like a character in a telenovela. Lastly, your relationships are a place for you to be all that and a bag of chips. So for my Aquarius example, I decided to do Barack Obama. And before you're just like, thanks Obama, I just wanna say I'm gonna do a lot of political candidates and a lot of presidents because I like to look at charts for their interest value and not really because like, oh, I'm a Republican, so I only look at Republican charts or, oh, I'm a Democrat. No, I look at the charts of everyone. I look at charts of serial killers, of presidents, of dictators. So just calm down. If you don't like Obama, that's fine. I'm gonna give you two options. Okay, so I shouldn't even have to say anything more. I should just pop up his picture and be like, Aquarius rising, you should be glad that he represents your sign. But I'm gonna tell you why I chose him. So Aquarius rising really, with their behavior, they like to get in to social structures and then do something that really makes them stand out. That is the Aquarius way. So Barack Obama stood out in many different ways. First of all, he was the first African-American president that we've ever had. So that in itself puts him in a league of his own. You know, he was different from the start. Not only that, but he was also our first cool president. And what I mean by that is he did things that were just really like chummy, really friendly sort of things that you wouldn't expect the president to do. So I don't know if you guys remember the beer summit, but essentially the beer summit was a time that he sat down with two people. It was a cop and an African-American professor. The cop had like questioned him as to like, why are you in this neighborhood? And the professor was like, do they live here? So it caused a lot of racial tensions in our country. So Barack Obama was just like, I'm gonna sit them down and have a beer with them. And doing what's more chummy and friendly than having a beer with your dudes? or your gals. 
nothing nothing is more friendly than that let me read you this quote from his book he said the opportunity that hawaii offered to experience a variety of cultures in a climate of mutual respect became an integral part of my worldview and a basis for the values that i hold most dear that reminded me a lot of he only has Aquarius rising, so that's where it's coming from. Aquarius rising people are very open to people of different nationalities, of different social groups, because they value the differences in people and want to acknowledge those differences. It's not like Pisces, who's just like, hey, we're all one, we're all in this family together. Aquarius is just like, no, we're not all like one mush. We're all different groups and let's study those groups. Let's look into them. Let's celebrate them for their differences and acknowledge that they're all here and they're all important and valid. That is the Aquarius way. Very open to different groups and different people. The Aquarius ways are just open to everybody, period. And last of all, the Rainbow White House. He did this when he was about to leave and I was just like, that was such an Aquarius rising thing to do because Aquarius rising people, as I said, they have the structure of Saturn. So they get into structures. They, they go into organizations. They go into government establishments. Just they go into the structure and then they just Uranus the hell out of it. So when he did that, I was just like, somebody come get the Aquarius rising. Maybe to us now, the thought of having like a rainbow white house is just like so normal or humdrum. There's nothing special about it. But at that point, it was just, I don't know. To me, it was really special. It was in 2015 after gay marriage was legalized and really him doing that on his way out was the kind of like the last thing and he could be like gotcha bitch and it was super cool of him to do that and some people will be like oh that was just a political stunt he was pandering to liberals but i really don't think it is because he didn't have to do that he was already leaving there was really no reason for him to do it other than just to be an aquarius and just be different and really you're just like how different is that well at that time, think about who he was and where he was. He was surrounded by a lot of like stuffy, old, like good old boy Saturn type people. And he was this guy with like these new ideas and these creative opinions about things. And he kind of just was just like, hey, this is my parting gift. And that was really Aquarius rising with him. I couldn't just do one Aquarius rising because I love Aquarius rising people. And I really love Billie Holiday. So Billie Holiday, I'm gonna put up her chart. Not only is she an Aquarius rising, but she also has Uranus in the first house. So it's very important to know the difference between Aquarius and Uranus. Uranus is Aquarius on steroids. So this is a really good example. So Billie Holiday, if you've never heard her sing, I really recommend that you listen to the song Strange Fruit. I'm gonna link it in, in the description because I really think everyone should hear it. Her voice is just so unique. And because she's in Aquarius Rising and Uranus is in her first house, I think it gives her that really unique quality about her because not only was she an amazing artist, but she was just so special and alien-like. And really what she did, I'm gonna go into my conspiracy theories now, but supposedly what happened with Billie Holiday is that she was singing the song Strange Fruit, which she didn't write. It was a poem who some, I think it was a British guy wrote it. He was driving down on a road in the South and he saw African-Americans hanging from trees and he wrote the poem. And then later Billie Holiday came across this poem and she was like, I'll make it a song. And she would sing at nightclubs and they were just like, you can't sing that. You, you need to stop singing that. And she was like, no, I'm not going to stop. And they were like, you have to. And Aquarius rising is very stubborn. It's fixed air. So they're very fixed about their opinions and their ideas and their beliefs. So she was like, no, I'm not going to stop. And they were just like, you have to stop. And she was like, no. So they took away her license to sing because at that time you had to have a license to sing. And she was, she still, she like snuck around and she would sing at other nightclubs and eventually they just completely, supposedly it was the CIA who overdosed her. She died of an overdose, but supposedly it wasn't intentional and it wasn't like self-caused, self-induced. So I don't know. I'm just saying she did this because she was a rebel. She was rebellious and she did the right thing, which really the right thing was exposing this and it's not like nobody knew people knew that these things were happening but because she she what did she do she used her position to really like stick it to him you know she really was accepted because of her beautiful voice and she wasn't like really accepted but she was allowed to sing on platforms that other people might not have 
been allowed to sing in because she was African American. And for that time, it was just like, hey, like we're giving you this stage, like you should be thankful. But she was like, no. So she took the position that she was able to gain through her hard work and through her talent. And she did something with it. And she did something that affected society because it is really hard to ignore that song. So that's what I'm gonna leave you with. I hope you listen to the song if you're interested and you've never heard it before, you have to hear it. So that's it, that's the video for today, guys. If you liked it, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to my channel. I put out astrology videos every single week, all weekend long, like Nickelodeon. I keep saying that, I don't even know if Nickelodeon still does that, but yeah, I'll see you in the next video.